Welcome to the first entry of Genshin's Hidden History, a series dedicated to exploring characters and stories in Genshin Impact that have been lost to time. Today's entry is about the life of the Kitsune Saigyu. We will be looking at the artifact set, Retracing Bolaid, and Shimano's Reminiscence, as well as the weapon Hakushin Ring. I hope you enjoy! Retracing Bolaid Summer Nights Bloom a man-made flower in eternal bloom. Who knows if there truly is life in there? A summer festival flower that blooms forever, that will not wilt, even if buried deep below the snow. Some may label it an imitation, a false life, for life lies in change, pain, and growth, in meetings, and also in partings. But the memories of meeting her of watching the fireworks bloom in the sky, like fresh flowers together. The memories of that foxy-eyed woman who eventually disappeared without a trace. That unwithering flower is the final thing to remember her by. In the end, the difference comes down to the fact that for some, life is as eternal as this undying summer bloom. But for most, it is as transient as smoke. Summer Night's Water Balloon Water balloons can be seen everywhere during the summer festival, but none are as finely wrought as this one. A beautiful water balloon filled with water. In the ghost stories of Inazuma, this is a memento of a chance meeting with something inhuman. During the summer festival, I was separated from my parents. It was but a moment, but I had wanted to look at the water balloons, and let go of my hand that had gripped onto my father's sleeve. Before we knew it, the tide of people escorting the divine palanquin had washed us apart. I cried by the Tory gates, along the road to the shrine, and I counted the feet of the people ascending the mountain. I do not know when it happened, but a beautiful lady with fox-like eyes had come to my side and taken my hand. How preposterous to leave such an adorable child here. So, how about it? Would you like to see the fireworks? Maybe throw some darts and play Fusin with me? Summer Night's Moment A pocket watch that has stopped at a certain point in time. A small ornate pocket watch. The watch seems to have stopped at a certain time of day. In the ghost stories of Inazuma, this has something to do with an encounter with something inhuman. On the night of the summer festival, as I walked the path to the shrine with a girl I admired, I heard, only barely, the sound of a lost child's cries. In that moment of distraction, I fell, spraining my ankle and breaking that pocket watch. While she ran to look for some ointment, I tried to make way for the people passing through, and sat down on a rock by the wayside to rest. The beautiful mask-wearing woman sat down beside me. There are a few who know about the spot, but it's the best place to watch the fireworks, you know? It should have been a dream. We hadn't met in ten years, and she had aged not a single day in those years, and yet... Oh, you've grown so much. Looks like we should pass on the game of Fusen. I brought wine, though. Let's watch the fireworks together. What do you say? Summer Night's Mask A popular mask cast in the image of a deity, as described in the legends. The mask of one indwelt by a deity. A mask that has been cast in the image of some legendary deity. People will often take on the guise of the fox of legend, covering their faces with masks based on her divine visage perhaps wishing that they might gain her ability of transformation. In Inazuma's legends, everything has a spirit. But even so, it is likely that most such beings would have long fled, driven into the forest by the suppression of the Shogun. But many people still believe in these divine foxes, and the ability to be indwelt by them. 
They believe that thousands of years of age may confer a power upon animals. As such, they also believe in what this fox mask represents. A note has been left on the back of this mask, written in a lovely hand. I'm sorry, I departed under the cover of the fireworks. We will most likely never meet again. Take care of yourself. Summer Nights Finale, a well-crafted wooden dart. It will only stop once it has reached its destination. An intricately made throwing dart. It is a common sight during the summer festival. In the ghost stories of Inazuma, there's a tale about a meeting between the human and inhuman. To celebrate my wife's pregnancy, I went to the shrine to give a votive offering. But for reasons unknown, I went up to the mountain with these objects. The water balloon from when I was seven, the fox mask from when I was seventeen, and a flower that would not wilt in ten or even a hundred years. Why did I expect to meet her again? No matchmaker introduced myself and my wife, and we were all short on money, and it took some time for us to produce an heir. But her days were still filled with happiness, were they not? But still, I detoured on the mountain road to the place where I'd seen the fireworks with her. Pulling the bushes apart, I thought I saw her dressed in white, sitting upon that rock. But when I came forward and looked, it was just a fox, sunbathing. It leaped up at the sound of snapping branches and fled into the woods. And like the spots of light that poke between leaves moved by the breeze, it was gone in a flash. All that was left was an old throwing dart. Shimonel's Reminiscence Entangling Bloom A lovely amulet made from twisted paper cord. It is said to hold the power to make wishes come true. An omomori crafted using an art known as Mizuhiki. It is said to have had the power to bind wishes and the reasons for those wishes within itself. Once, I learned how to manage the affairs of the shrine under the tutelage of a mighty kitsune. Back then, I was just a young shrine maiden who had just arrived in Natakami from a small fishing village. I was duller than a teapot and had yet to lose the obstinate impulsiveness and curiosity of a child. I was always naively skeptical of the elegant but incomprehensible words of Lady Saigu. Everything in the world is entangled, hence illusory visions were born out of concrete reality. The so-called omomori cannot make one's wishes come true at all, but they can make them eternal through this entanglement. The Lady Kitsune couldn't help but break into laughter upon seeing my clueless expression. She cheerfully knocked my head with her pipe and sneakily changed the subject. I suppose you've met your fated one as well, Hibiki? What sort of fate could there be with a rude and reckless brute like that? Oh, is that so? But darkness engulfed everything in the end. That fate, too. Was no more. Capricious Visage, a well preserved ceremonial fox mask. A small enigmatic smile ever graces its lips. A bright and elegant festival mask that once belonged to a certain Miko. A faint smile curls the edges of the mask's lips, but there is no real light in its eyes. I've spent much time training at the Grand Shrine. And I must say that I've matured a lot. At the very least, I'm not as foolish as I was when I was young, and I'm more independent now. But, for some reason, the more I grow, the more Lady Saigu's face seems to fall under a shadow. What emerges on her face is not anxiety nor fear, but rather a sorrowful reluctance. Life is full of uncertainty, love is fleeting, 
and even lasting memories may be lost. Losing one's memory is no different from losing one's life. It is like death, amidst darkness eternal. This time, even a faint smile could not conceal her sorrow. Though this is a festive day, it feels more like a farewell. Right then, why do you tell me about the idiot Compromario? <laughs> What's wrong? Still afraid that an old hag like me will steal him from you? Hopeful Heart, a special fortune-telling cylindrical object. The mechanism at the bottom allows one to easily remove all unwanted wish sticks. A special slip cylinder that the shrine uses for fortune-telling. It is supposedly infused with good fortune that the Kitsune have imparted upon it. Fortune-telling is born from the questions of lost people, thus, be a good or bad fortune, it will help them navigate their future. In other words, there are only lost people, and no inaccurate fortunes. I've learned a lot while studying at the shrine. Now even someone as dull-witted as I am has learned how to talk like a mighty kitsune. During this time, even someone as inhuman as the mighty Yogu Tengu has gotten a daughter. Even the leatherhead Kombumado has also become one of the shogun's own hatamoto, and shall soon marry the daughter of a high-ranking samurai. Such a lovely kid. Even the great Yogo Tengu, who used to kill all day for fun, had the mother inside her brought out. Just a little. Ah, still, the shrine is always missing the liveliness of children. That's not good. Say, Hibiki, how would you like to be a kid again? The Lady Kitsune's joke was out of line, as always, coming forth with the self-serving scent of Sakura wine. Oh, Hibiki, why the long face? How about this then? I, the Lady Saigyu, shall tell your fortune for you. <laughs> see? See, see? It's great fortune. Great fortune? You know what that means? It means you took away all the bad fortune slips. Please stop mocking me, Lady Saigyu. No. It means that the person you're missing will be lucky enough to become a part of your memories forever. And that's why you have to be strong and must live on for a long, long time. Even if all the people you cherish are gone, as long as you are still alive, the time you spent with them will never perish. Morning Dew's Moment A bronze pocket watch adorned with a twisted paper cord and a bell. Its hands are forever frozen at the dawn of a certain autumn day. An elegant watch adorned with a shrine bell. The hands always point towards the wee hours of the morning. As the sky brightens, morning dew condenses and then disappears. As beautiful as this colorful scenery may be, it is still short-lived. I once enjoyed the chirping of cicadas and the moonlight with Lady Saigyu on a slope in the middle of an autumn night. Back then, I was just a shrine maiden from the country, young and stubborn. Like a chirping finch, noisily insisting on my own view. A faint smile that crossed the mouth of Lady Kitsune fascinated me, but her words were, and remain, incomprehensible. Trying to hold on to a moment's beauty is like foolishly trying to grasp the morning dew. Like the morning dew, I have already passed away. All you have seen of me is but a residual vision, born of your wishes. In that vague memory, she kept saying some incomprehensible things. Her expression as sorrowful as the eighth month's moon, and I suddenly... Then she wrapped me over the head with her tobacco pipe, wearing her usual expression of rebuke and mockery. Ibiki, the sun's about to rise. We should head back. Shaft of Remembrance A demon-slaying arrow of a rather ancient make. It seems to have been preserved with great care by someone, even until the present day. A demon-slaying arrow used by the shrine for prayers and to drive away catastrophes. 
it is said to be capable of pursuing and destroying all demons. People often say that demon slaying arrows can drive away evil, but evil is never an objective thing. Evil often stems from within our hearts, born out of delirious minds that have turned cold and ashen from terror. Lady Psyche has been gone for a long time, and I'm no longer that young shrine maid in training at the Grand Narukami Shrine. Whenever I hold that empty smoking pipe, I can feel that emptiness and dull pain hover over me like a phantom. Having someone worth missing, losing someone whom I cannot help missing, and time keeps moving like a spinning wheel. A silent and tranquil, the Lady Kitsune's white form hidden in the deep darkness, left a deep impression in the Shrine Maiden's dreams. The Great Tengu went into self-imposed exile, enraged at her own incompetence as the Lady Saigi's protector, leaving Teruyo behind. Harunosuke left for another country amid the fury of his mourning, while Nagamasa joined the Shogunate to clear the Mikoshi name. As for the man who taught me archery in the sacred forest, and patiently listened to my naive promise under the scarlet sakura bells, he will eventually return to me, even if he were to be blinded by splattered blood, or turned into a fierce beast by that dark defilement. I shall save him with their bow and arrows, to keep our promise, whichever veers towards breaking. I shall destroy evil with their bow and arrows, exorcising folly and needless obsession. Come see me, you idiotic problem gambler. And don't lose your way this time, Kombumaru. Still, who won the last throw of the dice? She touched the bow lightly, while pondering such unimportant things. Hakushin Ring, a catalyst that carries the memory of the Kitsune Saigyu of ancient times. However, this device is but an impoverished vessel for the full breadth of her thought. People come and go in such haste, like dreams that stay in the night and leave in the morning. This simple and ordinary life, yes. I think I've lived it to the full. I was once the Hakushin Kitsune, with my agile and lovely comrades. I dashed across the mountains and plains of Narukami. Hopefully, when everything is over, they can run happily once more. I once met an Oni maiden, with a face as lovely as the moon. Together, we performed and played divine music before the throne and I cannot help but applaud her sword dance. I hope her beauty, bravery, and bearing shall be praised by people for thousands of years to come. At the thought of her unrivaled beauty, I cannot help wanting to hide my current appearance with a mask. I once got into a race with the chieftain of the Yogo Tengu, and we sprinted through all the courses and paths of the spirit mountains, both within it and around it. In this great contest of speed and strength, I, born of the Hakushin clan, was the eventual victor. Now that I think about it, she must have let me off easy. The very thought of it makes me feel a little unsatisfied. I once schemed against a Bakudanuki who persistently challenged me, and I made him surrender to the Shogun completely. I also shamelessly schemed against the Shogun, and I made her put the great Bakudanuki under her command. <laughs> that night, the moonlight swept the Imperial Garden through branch and petal, showering the courtyard with pearls from heaven. That scene still glows brightly in my shallow heart. I hope she can remember the wordy motto I dared to put to her ere we parted. Do not be blinded. Do not waver. Keep walking on the path you believe in. I hope that my words will ward off at least some of the lies and evil which you will face. 
I also hope that a mischievous yet innocent Tanuki will not hate me for my final deception. Now, in this darkest of places, I will hold tightly to these scenes, and like the moon shining through the clouds, they will light up my tiny, fragile heart. In this life, I once took the form of a human, and I walked with these short-lived, yet beautiful little creatures, and became friends with many people from all walks of life. Whether it was the Shrine Maiden, who came to train in Natakami for the sake of her hometown shrine, or the kid who got separated from the adults by the Divine Palanquin's entourage during the summer festival, or the easygoing young man who finally went to Liyue to practice the Adepti Arts, whether it's the Kanja who worked hard to make the city prosperous, or the craftsman who was obsessed with making extremely sharp swords, or the clan who used ingenious techniques to make man-made meteors bloom in the skies. All of them are friends whom I did not expect to make. I hope the barrier that guards them will not be eroded by any darkness. Everything, all of this, they are all things that I yearn for. So then, the dark will that gnaws at me, now that I have lost all my strength, my Hakushin blood is yours to do with as you will. However, despite being greatly humbled as I am, I still pray that you will listen to my pleas. If you can see everything that I treasure, then I beg pardon on behalf of those beings. If you would permit me to make but one wish, please, please return my ever-bright memory to this land that I love deeply. That way, even after your rampage, I may still hold out hope for beautiful things to endure. <laughs>